we have this. It says, write the integer that is represented. This one's gonna be a little tricky, just a little bit. Just make sure you pay attention. So we have A. It says negative, um, and then six in parentheses. When it looks just like this, this just means negative six. And we're, all, we're gonna focus on this part first. We're gonna focus on the opposites later. All right, so now, so if you have a negative, just one negative, that's how I'm going to make it negative six. But now I have two negatives. I have a negative on the outside and a negative on the inside. When you have two negatives, that's going to make it a positive. So if you see, so I'm going to put here um, two negatives equal one positive. So that means if you see two negatives next to each other, I like to cancel them out and make them plus signs, and this becomes positive three. But now I have on C, I have three negatives. Well, like I said, two negatives, I'll put them together. So these two become positive, but then I have another negative in there. Well, if you have, if you have a negative by itself just hanging out, your number is gonna be negative. After you've like crossed them out to make them positives, but you still have one negative left over, your answer is automatically gonna be negative. And so same thing on D. I have these two negatives become a positive, but then I have this one negative that is making it very difficult for it to stay positive. So this remains a negative. So before I move again, before I go on to this side, here's a little tip or trick. If you want to type this on your document somewhere, um, if you have an odd number of negatives your answer is always negative and I don't mean answer my bad your number That says number, by the way. So if you have odd number of negatives, your number is always negative. And if you have an even number of negatives, your number is always even. So this is just like a little trick or um, tip for you to think about. Did I say even? It's always positive. My bad, y'all. It's always positive. There we go. So again, if you, because you, we will have problems like this where I'm going to ask you to find the opposite of some of these numbers or numbers that look like this. So if you're given, um, Anything like this, remember that an odd number of negatives. So if you see that in front of a number, they have an odd number of negatives. So that's like one negative, three negatives, five negatives. Your number is going to end up being negative. But if you have an even number of negatives on the outside of the number, so that's like two negatives, four negatives, or six negatives, your, if, your number will always be positive because um, the negatives will eventually cancel each other out. But negatives, they tend to be very uh, controlling. So if there is just one negative left over, the number is automatically negative. So that's why there's an odd and even trick to think about it. So now that I did that little thing, we're gonna find the opposite of the numbers we just wrote. 
So what is the opposite of negative six? Well, if you remember the trick I told you, the opposite of negatives are what? Positive. So the opposite of negative six is positive six. So then I have the opposite of positive three. Well, what's the opposite of positive three? It's gonna be negative three. And then the opposite of negative five? Positive five. And then the opposite of negative 21? Positive 21. So this is the end of today's lesson. Um, we will be doing a little bit more practice with this, like I said, throughout the week. Um, my goal is for us to have a test, uh, a big unit test on Friday with um, what I just taught you, something I'm going to teach you tomorrow, which is also fairly easy, and what we did last week. Again, if you have any questions, do not hesitate to email me or to do make a private comment on this assignment. All right, now you have an independent practice to do by yourself, so I'll see y'all later.